All right, so we just finished up our, our duck hunt here out in public land, Colorado, and I just figured I'd go over some of the the real like bare minimum basics that you'd need to get started. Duck hunting can get really expensive. There's so much gear that you can get. We were just sitting in the blind with like $300 worth of stuff and talking about other things that we want to buy, but you don't need everything. So the three basics I would say would be waders. Um, you're gonna want hopefully a pair of insulated waders, especially if you live in a place like we do where you get ice up like mid-November. Um, you want something thick enough that you can break ice with it and not really worry about it breaking or ripping or anything like that. So this would be number one. These are just 400 grains of insulation, so they're nothing crazy fancy. And I use them until February here in Colorado. Um, and then obviously <clears throat> the shotgun's gonna be a big thing. Uh, this is just the Mossberg 500 12 gauge pump. I love this gun. Uh, everyone I hunt with, I always tell them how much I love this gun. Um, duck load can get kind of expensive. So I usually try and keep a box of three shot and a box of four shot in my blind bag. And uh, that'll usually get me through a hunt. Um, this here is the blind bag. So this basically just holds headlamp, shells, snacks, water, anything like that. Uh, gloves, extra warm clothes. Uh, I've got trash and some netting. So um, just kind of random bits and pieces that I need in there. And then obviously you can see my decoys out here. <coughs> um, you don't need a ton to get started. You can probably just throw half a dozen. I actually killed the first duck I ever shot it was over half a dozen decoys. Uh, no calls at all. Um, and they'll, they'll come in anyway. And then I would say the most important thing you can do for yourself is build you one of these setups here. So this is a jerk string. Just a two and a half pound weight tied to a length of bungee and then tied to a kite string here. So what that allows me to do is on real still mornings when there's not a lot of movement on the water, I can have some decoys set on this and just kind of jerk it back and forth and, and that'll add some ripples and motion onto our, our water. Um, and the motion is a bigger deal than calling for ducks. So a lot of people really like to get like super into the duck calls and the feeder chuckles and this and that and blah, blah, blah. That definitely helps once you can kind of figure those out. <coughs> Um, but if you said you can have a jerk string and a whistle and three decoys or 24 decoys and a duck call, I'd pick the jerk string whistle three every time. Um, so that's really all you need to get started. Like I said, there's so much more that you can get once you get into this with motion decoys, spinning wing decoys, you know, if you're field hunting, that's a totally different thing. Um, but if you're looking to just go shoot ducks on a pond or something, waders, jerk string, shotgun, good to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get these ducks plucked and waxed. Uh, they've been aging in my fridge for three days now. Um, <clears throat> so I always wax like all of my birds unless they are really, really damaged when I shoot them. Um, and I'll, I'll show you the waxing process at a later time, but basically all I'm trying to do right now is get the big feathers off so the wax can get to the down and the pin feathers. Um, so we got three mallards and a, and a lesser Canada goose here, and this will probably take us about 30 minutes to pluck and wax. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll get them plucked, show you kind of what I'm looking for after they're plucked, before they're waxed, and then show you the waxing pro process. So. Um, yeah, we'll get started on that. So this is all I'm really looking for when I'm plucking to get ready to wax. Um, most of these will come off in the wax. So you can see it's, it'll save you a lot of time because this is like the most annoying part of plucking ducks is getting all this down off. So. We'll get them nice and clean and get them in the wax. And then we'll just kind of really quickly, I'll just kind of explain general plucking. So if you want to zoom in on the actual feathers for this, I'll show them, show them the wing feather first. 
Okay. Okay, so how I like to do the wings, <clears throat> um, these bigger feathers on the bottom here are really tough to pull out. So take them one at a time and just pull straight out like that. Just going to take that one and pull straight out. If you try and pull a bunch, it's way harder because they're all at different angles there. So just one at a time. Should come out easy like that. <clears throat> so that's how I do the wings. The chest and pretty much the rest of the body. The, the biggest thing that you want to do is keep the skin tight against where you're pulling. So, and kind of just roll up with your thumb. So it's just kind of like a grab and roll. It's that simple. So you just do that over the whole whole bird until you get down to this down layer and then you're you're ready to wax. So we got one more bird to go and then we'll we'll go inside and show you how to wax them. Okay, so we've got our plucked ducks here ready to wax. Um, <clears throat> duck waxing is like a really old school technique and it really does a good job of getting the skin nice and clean and all the down feathers off. So this here is a big block of duck wax. I usually order 10 to 15 pounds per season. Um, and I use maybe a pound per like plucking session. So all you do is you take it, do you want to bring the camera up here and show? You just take it and you melt it on top of a pot of water. So the ideal ratio is uh, a quarter wax to three quarters water. But I get away with a lot less than that, honestly. It's I usually get just about an inch layer of wax on top of my water, and everything works fine. Um, so you don't want the wax too hot. I brought this to a boil and then reduced the heat to low for a while. So it's sitting, I'm shooting for about 170 to 180. If it's too hot, you'll get a really thin layer of wax on top, and it won't do what you're looking for. And if it's too cold, you'll just be losing a lot of wax in the process. Um, so I'll just show you really quick. It's kind of like making a candle here. So our duck is still whole. We haven't gutted it or anything. All we've done is plucked it at this point. And uh, I'll actually take one of these because both the wings. So <clears throat> the real tricky areas when you're waxing are basically the armpits here because if you're holding it closed, you won't get wax in there. So, what we'll do is I'm going to take him and dip him by his feet. I'm going to hold his feet out like that. Just a quick dip. Bring him up. I'm going to do that one more time. And then you just want to take them and drop them in a sink with cold water. A sink or a, a basin or anything that's going to get that wax nice and solidified right on contact there. Um, so we'll let the wax solidify up and then peel it off and you'll be left with a nice clean finished product. Okay, <clears throat> so after the cold water bath, that wax is nice and solidified. Um, kind of the easiest way for me to attack it usually is by the chest. So I'll just push in until I get that first piece off. And I always like to keep a bolt. Whenever you wax anything, you're gonna ruin your pot and, and usually whatever utensils you use. So uh, you can re-filter the wax. So after I peel it off of the duck, I usually like to separate it and put it in a different bowl. And I'll melt that down and filter it out later. So basically after you get that first spot, you can see the rest comes off pretty easy. And if you just want to zoom in on the skin here, you can see how nice and, and clean and smooth this looks. I mean it's like restaurant quality here so um, that's what we're shooting for especially if you get a duck that you shoot and you know the breasts are still nice and intact and, and it doesn't have a lot of damage in the wings like this one. This one's a perfect 
nice Drake Mallard. Um, I, I highly recommend waxing over over breasting out birds. So um, I'm gonna let my friend take over here. And I will talk to you about aging and, and kind of like how I treat ducks after they're shot. So, so after I shoot a duck, uh, generally it, it, it kind of depends on the weather. Where I am in Colorado, a lot of times in waterfowl season, especially in later, in late season, you can get away with just hanging ducks outside. Um, but aging is imperative. Like. I, I will n I never shoot an animal and then take it home and eat it that night. I know a lot of guys will and a lot of guys don't really like it. That's why ducks usually end up in like gumbo or jerky or you know something like that that's that just kind of hides the flavor. Um, so what you're shooting for is something between 40 and 50 degrees uh, as low as you know mid 30s. If you're getting down in the freezing temps at night like, uh, when when I shot these ducks, I just hung them outside for a couple days and, and you know it dipped down into freezing and I'm not really too concerned about that. Um, I, I hang them for at least three to five days most of the time. If they're real damaged and I can tell that, like there's a lot of damage on the breast section or, or anywhere where there'd be guts, I'll pluck those immediately and um, usually those, if any birds get breasted out it's usually the ones that, that look pretty damaged. You don't want to age a bird that has a lot of guts that are you know not intact anymore so um, yeah basically you hang it in a, in a cool area fully intact not plucked gutted anything just just on your duck tote like just like you brought it off the field. Or worst case scenario, uh, you can age them also in the bottom of just like a normal refrigerator. These ones, or in the past, I've just laid them out on a sheet tray and just had them on the bottom shelf in my fridge. I've had them in just big paper bags. I've had them in like the reusable totes. Um, you just basically you want fresh air exchange and if the duck is wet, you want it, you want it to to be dry before you do that. So, um, yeah, you can you can age really in anything. So if you have a little mini fridge or if you want to set up a home fridge for aging, it's it's totally a possibility. But it's a big part of the process. So we'll go ahead and get the rest of these waxed up and and show you the rest of the cooking process after that. So the duck's nice and clean here. <clears throat> Just got to get the. Uh, head off, these wing tips off, and the guts out. So, just peel back a little bit on that neck. So there's the head, a quick tip with these feet, um, a good way to get the feet and all the tendons of the legs. So the legs can be really tough and unpleasant to eat because they have a lot of tendons that run through them. So if you just wring this skin, just real gently, you're just trying to cut through the skin, not trying to cut through really anything else. And then pull until I got a little bit of skin still. You'll get all those tendons that just come right out. Head, feet are off. We're gonna go up this wing joint. Just break 
<clears throat> all right so now all we need to do is get the guts out and there's a couple of things in here to take note of so ducks are unique birds in the fact that they don't have a crop that we need to take out so if this were a pheasant or a grouse or a quail or dove or really anything else they would be storing their food right up here um, and you'd need to take that out before you serve it obviously you don't need to take it out before you age it you can actually age it with the food in there but um, so we don't have to worry about that on a duck but we're just going to do the normal kind of bird gutting procedure so just like on a rabbit or a squirrel or anything else I like to start by pinching just a little bit. I'm making a horizontal cut right there. And I'm doing that just a little bit below this breastbone. <clears throat> then I'll open that up the rest of the way with my fingers. Cut down to the tail. So looking at our gut pile here, obviously we have the heart there. We have a bunch of intestines which are of no interest to us. Um, this big weird looking thing is the gizzard, which I will take. And sometimes there can be food that's, that's stuck right there that'll come out when you cut that off. Not a big deal. That will set to the side. And then we've got the liver here. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our gizzard here. <clears throat> Basically the gizzard is these two muscles surrounding one sack full of rocks. <laughs> um, so the easiest way to get rid of the sack is to just cut these muscles off. Then you have two nice little chunks of meat. These will still be really tough, but if you get a lot of duck fat throughout the season, you can just freeze these as you go and just throw these in a bunch of duck fat at the end of the season and you'll have a nice, nice little meal for yourself. So that's how you clean a duck. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get all these vacuum sealed and then I will show you a couple different ways that you can break them down for eating. Okay, so I have a Lesser Canada Goose here that we shot the other day. It's been aged, plucked, and waxed, and we're about to slow cook it in beef fat. So I'm gonna show you how I like to break it down into um, kind of the primal cuts before uh, searing and, and slow cooking. Um, so the, the easiest thing to take off, in my opinion, is gonna be the thighs here. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna open that up. and just peel it back and you can see that bone the little ball joint there just gonna take off that 
whole leg. Do the same on this side here. There are the legs. We'll do the wings next. So kind of the same thing. Just keep peeling back <clears throat> until you find that joint. Now we've got just the breasts, which we'll take off. So we've got the breasts there. Okay, so that's our, our whole goose broken down. Um, I would say probably 99% of goose meat in this country is turned into jerky. And very, very, very few people are actually taking the time to pluck and break down a whole goose like this. Um, but there's a huge amount of meat on the wings and my favorite part of the goose is definitely the leg and thigh. Uh, so I'll slow cook this whole thing um, and then we'll probably put it over lentils. Um, but every part of the goose, in my opinion, is really good. Honestly, the breasts are like my least favorite part. Um, you can cook the breasts just like a steak, but I do recommend marinating them for a bit. If you can see here, uh, they're really, really dark red. Um, and they, they do have kind of a, a noticeable flavor. Um, but this goose, as you see, a big chunk of fat here, big chunk of fat here, was, was well fed, he was, he was eating on corn, um, and I'm sure he'll be really tasty, so I'm going to wait for the beef fat to render down a bit more, and then we'll, we'll sear him off and, and slow cook him for a couple hours. Okay, so I've got my duck plucked, waxed, gutted, and ready to blanch. And I've got my broth here. Uh, like I said, it, it was a roasted grouse carcass, a couple of cloves, some fish sauce, some hot peppers. Um, you can really make it whatever you want. And I'm gonna just kinda ladle that over the skin. So again, the idea is to just kinda slowly cook the skin um, you want to start to see it kind of contract up on the duck. That's how you can tell it started to cook. So it'll take a couple of minutes of this, uh, but you'll be able to tell a noticeable difference once it's done. So. probably seven or eight minutes of uh, just basting but I can feel that the skin has gotten a lot tighter and you can kind of feel that the fat is starting to render out and that's what we're looking for. Um, the reason why we're, we're doing it so slow and painstaking is because we really don't want to start cooking the flesh and we just want the skin to get cooked all the way through. Um, so you could do that just by kind of like lightly poaching, but this is the most, the easiest way to control that. Um, so we're done with this part of the process. The next step will be taking 
the breast and the thigh off and then we'll kind of cook that as one unit and uh, yeah we'll let that dry out for a couple hours before we throw it in our cast iron skillet and hopefully get some nice crispy duck skin. Okay I've got the mallard that we just cooked the skin on and now I'm going to get ready to show you guys how to just take the breast and the thigh off as one piece and we'll, we'll get the wing off as well. So this, this is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to start with the thigh like we did on the goose. I'm going to turn the duck around, come down the breastplate, And you just kind of want to keep rolling back and following the cut wherever you roll. And you can see here there's a joint <clears throat> where the wing meets up with the rib cage. And to keep the wing on, we're just going to go right through that. Keep rolling. Just keep rolling it. ball joint for the thigh. <clears throat> and that's what we're looking for. So I've got the wing, the breast, the thigh, and the leg all attached in one. So we'll just do that really quick on this side. So there we have our servable portions of a duck. Um, you can keep the carcass and roast it for duck stock or anything like that. There's not a whole lot of meat left, um, but there is some good flavor there. So we'll let these dry out. I'm going to throw them on just kind of like a baking rack and let them dry out in my fridge for a couple hours and then we'll throw them in a cast iron skillet and get them nice and crispy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start searing off this goose so I can get it slow cooking. I'm just going to salt the skins pretty heavily. <laughs> I've got a pan here that's just completely dry and been heating up on fairly high heat. I'm just going to start skin side down and, and try and render some of that fat out. I'm going to lower the heat to about medium high and just kind of keep an eye on these. And, um, once this side is nice and golden brown, I'll flip it, brown the meat, and then it'll go straight into our pot of beef fat here. Okay, so the goose is nice and brown and in the beef fat, so we're going to add one medium onion, a couple mushroom butts, two cloves of garlic, a heavy pinch of salt, some hot red peppers, and I'm going to give that a good stir just so everything gets kind of nice and even under that beef fat. So you just want to cover that with a lid and let it sit low and slow for two to four hours. In the meantime, heat up some oil hot in a pan. This is diced king oyster mushrooms, some diced carrots, and some diced garlic. Just gonna saute that up until it's kinda uh, just starting to lose some of its juices and, and kinda sweat out a bit, so just, you know, kinda pre-cooking it before the end of the dish. Okay, so now that that's nice and sweat out, I'm going to add some cooked lentils. 
just also just stir that around. I'm just getting this ready for uh, later when I'm about to plate up. Oh, almost forgot. Add butter. Always add butter to lentils. That's the most important part. Okay, now time for the star of the show. I'm going to heat up some oil. Get it pretty close to smoking hot here. Okay, now that I see some smoke coming up off the pan, I'm going to add my duck skin side down and just push nice and hard so it makes contact against the pan. I can fit a whole duck in one pan here. So I'm just pulling the wing out of the way there so the skin can make contact with the bottom of the pan and, and get nice and crispy. Move it around so all parts of the skin make contact with it, and give it a good push. It'll 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 try and contract as it cooks. Just keep pushing it down so it makes contact. Remember to salt both sides here. Okay, now that that skin's looking nice and brown, I'm gonna flip it and start to cook it on the flesh side. Just gonna keep cooking until it's the preferred doneness. I like duck pretty rare. Okay, so removing the duck from the pan and just adding some of that uh, slow cooked goose and my lentils all into the same pan. And that's gonna be the base for my duck. So getting that into my dish here. That's half of a duck. Some bison demi glaze and some alfalfa sprouts. And there you go, there's your full breakdown of a duck and a goose and my favorite way to cook them.